Hey everyone, super excited today to be talking about radical exchange and in particular quadratic voting and quadratic finance and we're going to jump straight into it and unpack these really cool topics. So first off, you know, radical exchange is a global movement dedicated to reimagining the building blocks of democracy and markets in order to uphold fairness, plurality and meaningful participation in a rapidly changing world. And if we look at these building blocks we're talking about, bam, 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 as you can see, these are quadratic building blocks we're referring to in the video today, and that is quadratic voting and quadratic finance. So without further ado, let's get into quadratic. And when you think of quadratic, alarm bells might be going off in your head. You might be thinking back to school and seeing visions of these equations and these graphs and being very perplexed and confused. But it's actually pretty simple and it's very cool and effective. So let's start off with quadratic voting. It essentially allows people to express the relative strength of their preferences in a democratic process. And you might be thinking, hmm, so how does that work? So imagine we have 50 different proposals that exist and you want to now express your preference of these different proposals. Well, we have this quadratic function, which you can actually see over here in the bottom. And essentially what it maps to is for every number of voice credits you have, the root of that is the number of votes you actually get. So imagine I, John John, have 100 voice credits. One voice credit is one vote. Four voice credits are two votes, etc., etc. So if I cast nine voice credits, the root of nine is three, and it will count as three votes. Now, why does quadratic voting work like that? Basically, no longer would 51 people who support a proposal but barely care about the issue outvote 49 incredibly passionate opponents, predictably making society worse in the process. So essentially, quadratic voting on average is the ideal way of allowing people to more and more impose their desires on the rest of society, but at an ever escalating cost. And people are more likely to vote strongly, not only about issues they care more about, but issues they know more about. And this is really the beauty of quadratic voting. So remember, in a nutshell, it allows people to express the relative strength of their preferences in a democratic process. Now, let's look a bit at public goods and the two problems we often find. A funding problem. If people won't donate voluntarily, where does the money actually come from? This is the funding problem we're talking about and the decision problem. How do we actually decide what's an actual public good in the first place? Anyways, let's get on to the topic of public uh, quadratic finance, which is really awesome, quadratic funding, and it addresses this exact challenge for us. So imagine a similar case with quadratic funding when we had 50 different grants. Quadratic funding is the economically optimal way to fund public goods in a decentralized, self-organizing ecosystem. So how does that work? Well, if we look at the funding formula, there's more weight on grants with many small donations than on a few large ones. And if that doesn't make sense, we have absolutely the perfect visual to help you actually understand what's going on here. So as you can see, imagine we have different proposals such as fixing the streets, building a playground, improving cell phone coverage. As you can see, these are all public goods that lots of people would like to essentially utilize. Now if we're looking at contributions, as you can see over here, this image shows the size of the match from the fund with the dark area being the match from the fund. And what you can see is that if you have lots of people contributing even small amounts, this really increases to a larger match and contribution from the fund as opposed to a case where you only have, say, two people with much larger donations, the match is a lot smaller from the fund. So essentially what we've done is we've created a way that's economically optimal to fund these public goods in a sort of decentralized, self-organizing ecosystem. And that's really exciting. So again, quadratic funding is about democratic incentives in a nutshell. 
and a couple examples just to name them are the news media, um, arts and culture, campaign finances, um, urban public projects, open source software, you know, much more. There's so many incredible areas where quadratic funding can actually exist and be used. And one of the awesome places that it's being used already is obviously Gitcoin. If you go to Gitcoin, you can see they use quadratic funding to help fund a number of awesome projects um, in the Ethereum ecosystem. So that's Radical Exchange and that's that's you spitting out your cereal after realizing how insane and awesome these ideas are. And super quick shout out to Wildcards, which actually uses quadratic voting to award funding to conservation organizations on a monthly basis. So if you want to learn more about that, head over to wildcards.world and you can go ahead and click on down and learn how Wildcards uses quadratic voting in order to fund animal conservation. Amazing.